guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we're going to do some stop action and uh, find out what this oven uh, behind me is all about. This is a conveyorized oven with two heat zones. Uh, people think, oh, oven's just a box with a heater on it, but there's a little more to it than that. Uh, we're going to give you a top down time lapse of this uh, unit and show what all goes into an oven, how to distribute the heat properly, how to create two different temperature zones, and how to protect. Uh, Customers' concrete from uh, from drying out. So uh, let's do let's let's cut to the time lapse and see what uh, see what this oven's all about. All right, thanks for watching. This is the dehydrant section. Conveyor rail runs through the dehydrant section after it's out of the washer to dehydrate the parts. Another air knife as it exits. Uh, where that wall there is unfinished. We're going to be getting a dividing wall within the, within the oven, across those two columns, and over to that other wall over there that is still exposed on the end grain. So there's going to be a dividing wall between the low temperature side of the oven and the high temperature side of the oven. I'll give you a brief overview. Washer, conveyor, air knife, dehydrant, Air knife comes out, goes to coating. This is coating coming back. Air knife, and this is where it comes in to do the baking. This is the high temperature side, baking. Another air knife, exit. So we're focusing on this section of the system right now. This is all oven, low temp side, high temp side. All right. But that's progress as of uh, Friday morning early. And uh, let's see, we've got our conveyor rail in, coming out of the washer on that triangular shaped stand. Uh, it does a drop down from there, goes in through an air knife, and goes through the far end of the oven, then hooks a left and goes out through another air knife. That's the dehydrator section of the oven. Uh, that's where the parts come out of the washer and, and uh, get dehydrated and get, get all the moisture out of them. Um, then we've got a conveyor rail just hanging out of the end that goes off to a powder coat booth, which is going over there. Back here we got two more air knives. Uh, this is for the baking cycle for the uh, powder coat. And then it goes through the racetrack of the high temperature side of the oven, closest to us here. And you'll, you can see all the expansion joints in the system. Um, uh, for the uh, hot cold cycles to keep it keep it from buckling the track and uh, that's the oven structure walls and conveyor uh, that was three days work getting that getting the oven to this point we're going to put a lid on it next week but that's a story for another day thought i'd show you around So you see here we've got the uh, chassis of the oven complete, conveyor track is run, and all the walls are standing on the oven. Uh, now, now that all the overhead work's done, we can start on the floor. And uh, first thing that goes down is a heavy uh, two-inch channel, a you know, black iron channel, and then we lay rock wool in between the channel, and then fasten down a, a B decking, and the B deck goes down above that and it creates a small air gap. What this what this entire system does, it protects the customer's floor from drying out. And uh, an oven that runs this temperature would absolutely destroy the concrete in a matter of time. But uh, here, let's watch as we finish up putting in the floor and cutting in the V-deck around the uh, structural columns. Now that the floor is finished up, we can work on the mechanical unit and the first uh, bit of ductwork going in. Uh, after we get the first piece attached, it goes pretty quick. This is a updraft style oven, so all the ducting and distribution duct sits on the floor of the oven and just blows the hot air across the part from the bottom up. But uh, here, let's take a look as we finish up the, uh, the main oven duct.
cut across the back, you can see we're building a, uh, a division wall out of uh, the same material, B-Deck. And uh, this is just to create a heat barrier between uh, the main oven and the back side of the oven, which is actually uh, a dehydrant section. And that's going to get used to dry out parts as they're coming out of the washer. Uh, and so they want a very specific control between the two. Uh, and they've got two different heat zones with a motorized damper between them so they can uh, control the heat between the uh, back of the oven and the, and the main oven. Uh, here you see we're starting on the lid. Uh, we're going to finally put a roof on it. And the uh, reason we do this last is it blocks all the available light inside the oven and nobody likes working in the dark. So uh, here's the roof going on it. Uh, we're leaving an intentional half inch gap between each panel. Uh, to allow room for expansion and the panels pretty much just float on this thing they, they kind of just lay there they get attached around the perimeter um, but we uh, put some flat straps uh, across them and they don't even get screwed down tight this provides uh, expansion relief and it also provides explosion relief if there's an explosion in the oven the roof's going to blow off Next up comes a trim. Uh, here uh, somebody's putting in all the upper coping and you'll notice that uh, every single cavity of this oven gets filled with rock wool and that's uh, just for you don't want to create hot spots anywhere in an oven. So uh, anywhere you've got a cavity air can get in there and with the air comes the heat. So you pack everything with rock wool very tightly and fill all cavities with rock wool on the way around. Uh, this, this keeps uh, personnel from getting burned if they're walking by the oven and keeps the outside temperatures down. Uh, they're installing the blowers for the air knives and uh, they're installing the coping uh, around the perimeter of it and getting this thing trimmed out. Uh, at this point this oven's pretty much mechanically done. Okay, let's watch them finish up. Here's your final walkthrough on the oven. I'm going to carry a handheld flashlight here. I'll show you some of the ductwork. Um, the ductwork has slots down the side for discharging the air, and the heat just gently uh, rises over the part, and those slots are around the perimeter of all these ducts. See down that side there? And this ducting system is uh, pretty extensive within the oven. You probably saw on the time lapse how it went together. It pretty much covers the entire floor. Uh, that section has got slots on the top. And let me walk over here real quick. 
and let you peek at the burner. That's the burner tube right there. That's a stainless steel tube with a uh, refractory element inside. Uh, it fires straight down um, to the blower section. The blower's right down there. And that's what pressurizes the duct down here at the floor. This duct passes through. We're in the main section of the oven and the du this duct passes through and there's a, there's, a, there's a damper within this duct right there that feeds this side of the oven, which is the dehydrant section. And that damper directly below me is controlled by a linkage inside that tube right there. Uh, that's going to be controlled by a modulating motor to control the independent temperature. Uh, these openings are for return air. Those are on slide dampers. So they can control the amount of uh, return air. So those slide dampers get set one time and uh, pinned off with a screw. But that's the whole inside of our oven there. Sorry it's so dark guys. Okay, so here's, here's the outside of the uh, unit. Uh, there's the burner that you saw from the inside. That's the combustion blower and a portion of the gas train ratio regulator and combustion blower motor. Uh, it's fuel line coming down and then your gas trains down here and that's a double blocking uh, valve with high and low uh, gas pressure switches and that's our inlet. Air proofing switch. Uh, that's a drive motor for the uh, for that big blower you saw inside and belts and drive and belt guard. Uh, this oven is scheduled for paint, and that's why you see all the little sanding marks on all the uh, on all the spot welds. So, in preparation for paint, we went around and scuffed off the top of every single spot weld just to smooth it out. That. Uh, Hoffman box is for a, there's a thermocouple probe in there. That's where it senses the dehydrant temperature. And we did a little paint test to see how it was going to take the paint. Looks pretty good and looks like it'll take it okay. No fish, fish eyes or anything funny. And there's a the thermocouple location for the main oven in another Hoffman box. Oh, and another paint test. Wow, if nothing else, my guys are thorough. Okay, that's the whole oven. You guys saw it go together. And uh, I don't know if I can get far enough away from it for you to get the whole thing, but uh, let's give it a try. There's, there's a good shot of it there. How's that? Okay guys, that's a uh, industrial oven with a conveyor. Uh, stay tuned for part three and four where we go through the conveyor and the powder booth. Alright guys, thanks for watching.